this one right now. It's on? Okay. Well, I'm just going to pray, uh, get us started, and then I'm going to bring, uh, if Brother Kurt will come up and uh, uh, lead us in a song uh, for Sunday school. So the song that we're going to sing in just a minute will be uh, A Shelter in the Time of Storm, 369. So if you want to get that and have it close, we'll be ready for it. But I'm going to open Sunday school time up with a word of prayer. Father, we again thank you for this uh, blessed morning that you've given us here, Lord, at Charity Baptist Church. Lord, we thank you for the place that you've given us to be able to gather, Lord, and it's warm here. Pray that our hearts would be that way, Lord, uh, toward you too this morning. Allow us to be willing and ready for your word to uh, grow thereby, Lord, and to share with others, Lord, the beauty of our relationship with you and what you've done for us, Lord. We'd ask, Lord, those people again, we know that we've uh, been reaching out to many people in the community, that those would come this morning and be a part, of, Lord, of our service. And uh, we just give you our Sunday school hour in the name of Jesus. Amen. 369. We've got to stand, though. Three sixty nine, a shelter in a time of storm. First two verses, okay. <laughs> had to lead the music a couple times and it's not generally pretty so <laughs> thank you brother Kurt for coming up and doing that for us uh, kind of uh, on the uh, end of where we were last week that's kind of a fitting song uh, what we've been looking at in Nahum uh, that's where we're at so if you take uh, your Bibles and you open uh, to that book And we don't go there very often, so sometimes it can be hard for us to find. We've done some introduction to uh, uh, this book. We've looked at kind of two titles, The Burden of Nineveh and the Book of the Vision of Nahum, the Elkoshite. And now we're beginning to look at the character of God, and uh, we first looked at uh, his character of being a jealous God, and being a jealous God, there were two sides of his jealousy that we had looked at, and then uh, last uh, week we moved on uh, to looking at God's character of being slow to anger, and that uh, another quality that we saw with him being slow to anger was also he was great in power, and because of his greatness of his power, he was able to be slow to anger and not uh, bring forth that wrath as quickly as he could. But we see here that Nahum, we know, is a book of God's wrath and judgment that's going to come upon Nineveh or the Assyrian Empire, and we saw a little description of that. Last week at the end of verse uh, number three, 
It says, The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. So I was just thinking of that storm that uh, actually came upon Nineveh, we know, and completely destroyed it, but we're going to be looking at some of those things. But there's a coming day when God's going to bring his wrath too, but we're sheltered. We're sheltered from that in our Lord, and what a great thing that is for us. So we ended uh, last week right there, and uh, we're going to move on into verse 4 to see another piece of the character of, of God. I'm going to read that verse. It says, He rebuketh the sea, and maketh it dry, and he drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth in Carmel. And the flower of Lebanon languisheth. And that's all we're going to deal with is that one verse right there. Lee's shaking his head if we could. But you, if you're here tonight when we get back to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, we're going to actually cover one entire chapter. And we covered one entire chapter of that last week. Um, if you missed that, that doesn't happen very often. But uh, here we have the one Verse, verse 4, uh, the character that we see, he rebuketh, he rebuketh. And we see that it talks about his rebuke first of the sea, and he maketh it dry, and he drieth up all the rivers. Well, he's actually speaking back to the time when God rebuked the sea when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea. He rebuked it in the sense that he held back the waters, didn't he? So the children of Israel could cross on dry ground to the other side. And that speaks, we know, of salvation that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they got on the other side, they sang Moses' song of redemption. The redemption song. So he rebukes the sea, and then he, it talks about he drieth up all the rivers. And that's speaking of that time when they then came through the wilderness and they got to the Jordan River. And he dried up, or held back, rebuked the north side of the Jordan River to keep all the water on the one side, and everything that came from below it was dried up for a time, and the children of Israel crossed over. You know, that was different than... The Red Sea, it looks like the Red Sea parted and held both sides back. But the Jordan River was only held back from the north and everything south of it dried up. So we see God rebuking the sea and God rebuking the rivers. But we see a little bit more here. It says, He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry and dry up all the rivers. And then we got this place, Bashan, that's languishing. And Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon, languish. Yeah. And what a, as you start looking at it, what God is showing us here, I think, is some, some nice things. And in reference to Bashan, is talking about, does anybody know where Bashan is? Let me ask that. Maybe Jackie does, the Bible student there. Geography. Who's the, who's the geography uh, teacher? Yes, Chrissy's talked about him quite a bit and liked, liked his uh, teaching and stuff and his knowledge of all those things. So Bashan, anybody know where Bashan is? <laughs> a blank. Bashan's on that side, the eastern side of the Jordan River. When the children of Israel came up there and they conquered Sihon and Og, the king of the Amorites there, they come up through That was Bashan. So Bashan, it says, languisheth, and languisheth really means that they are weary and they've been made weak. And the rebuke of God, rebuke, when it said that he rebukes, God rebukes, he chastens, he punishes, and he afflicts us for correction. That's what the rebuke means. A little different when he rebuked the sea, he rebuked it back so we could pass through, but he also rebukes us in our life. And we see that character of his 
rebuking, and that's what he's done here. When we look at Bashan, it languisheth. Then we have the place that's called Carmel. And it's actually Mount Carmel, because there is another Carmel that's right in the area of Judah. But Mount Carmel, does anybody know where Mount Carmel is? That place where Elijah had that, what was it, a duel with the uh, false gods or prophets of Baal there. Where's Mount Carmel at? Charlie, you, you, you said something. Where is it? What side? On the west side, that's right. Not too far from the Mediterranean Sea. If you got that picture in your mind, so we got the west side, Mount Carmel, close. It's a ways in from the Mediterranean, but I think that's where Elijah, when he saw the little cloud develop, was that coming from the Mediterranean Sea? See there as he was on Mount Carmel in that area? Where was it? I don't know for sure. But So we got the western side. We've got the eastern side. And then we got Lebanon. Lebanon here. The flower of Lebanon languisheth. It too is weary and is weak. Where's Lebanon? Where, Brother Kurt, did you say? The north, yep. Lebanon would be up on the northern, on the northern side. That's exactly right. So as we look at it, we've got the north covered. We've got the west covered. We've got the east covered. And that was that portion of the land that was given to Israel. But what place don't we see mentioned here? Shelley said the south. The south isn't mentioned. What was in the southern area, which would have been Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, the two tribes that hadn't yet rebelled, where they were carried into captivity in Babylon. So he's talking only about the northern kingdom, setting those borders out that had been punished or rebuked by the hand of God with the Assyrian Empire, and they'd been carried captive. We already had talked about that. But I thought that was a beautiful picture, how God gives it. He talks about Bashan. He talks about Mount Carmel and Lebanon, speaking of that area. But it appears they're weary, and they've been made weak by God's rebuke. And where is Nahum, during the time that he's delivering these message in the book here, but we know that he did grow up in what I think, there's several, remember I told you, sir, several many ideas, but I really believe it was in Capernaum. Caper, Nahum, kind of coming from Nahum, his name, in the area of Galilee, and when the Assyrians came in to take him captive, Nahum fled to the southern part of Judah where he begins to prophesy the things that were happening. So from the area in which he was at in the south, he knew what happened from the east to the west to the north, that it had been desolate by the Assyrian Empire. Israel had been taken captive. And it was, oh dear, close to his heart because those were his people. Those were his people. And as we look at uh, Bashan, I'm going to give a little bit more about Bashan. On that east side of the Jordan, that was the area that was rich in pasture land. That would be a place that we'd want to graze the cattle, horses that you have. That pasture land was great in that area. And then uh, as we look at Mount Carmel, Mount Carmel was the area that was rich in vineyards and gardens. Vineyards and gardens. And then up north in Lebanon, it mentions a little bit of a flower here, but the flowers had the strongest fragrance. 
from Lebanon. Have you been, you know that spring time of the year, we've got that tree in our front yard, kind of the left of our driveway that I don't like because it, because it drops all those, what are they, what is that? Cran apples. And there, it seems like there's always cran apples through, cran apple, cran, cran what? Crab. Crab apple, crab apple. They're all over all year. It, it doesn't, you'd think that they would eventually all be off there where there wouldn't be any, but even through the winter, they're still falling. In the spring when the flowers come on, they're still falling off there, and then we get new ones. And then it starts all over again, but it's, it's all year, it seems like. I sweep them off the driveway. But when it's flowering, you can come out of the house, and you can smell that fragrance of that tree, and it is beautiful. And I think that's what I'm thinking of the flowers of Lebanon. When you'd go to Lebanon, the flowers that you would smell, it was known for that. Not only that, who knows what else Lebanon was known for? Some other great thing. What, Jackie, you said it, I think. Cedars, yeah. The great cedar trees of Lebanon. And I think in the days that we live in now, there's not a whole lot of them left like it was in the forest lands during this time because people went in and used up many of them, but there are still some there, but not like in the time that Nahum knew, the great cedars. What a great land God had given them, but Nahum sees it here as a land that is now languishing and it's weak from the hand of the rebuke of God. But in the midst of that, we see, you know what? We said it's kind of a dark book because we see judgment, but yet we see he's a great comforter. Nahum's name means comfort. He's that great comforter, and he brings comfort even in the midst of what he sees with Israel and what has happened to them, the rebuking hand of God. They're weary. They're down to the lowest that they could be. But you know, when we... When we come to know the Lord and we become His sons, His daughters, He's our Father. And He rebuketh us like a son and like a daughter. And when He rebukes us, His character is still the same as it was here. He rebuked them, but in that rebuke, He wanted to bring them down to their weakness where they were weary and they were weak. And they could only do one thing, and that was to turn to the God of Israel. So when our God today, at this time, rebukes us as sons and daughters, it's for the same purpose. I want to bring you low and make you weary so that you can't get up in your own strength, but the only strength you can get up in is in my strength in you. I think that's what happened to the prodigal son. I think the prodigal son, as he left and squandered all that he had, he was there amongst the pigs, the swine, feeding them the corn cobs, eating maybe those corn cobs himself, thinking back to what it was like in his father's house. He was brought low to the lowest he could be. And the only way that the prodigal could come up and rise was in the strength of God. It wasn't in his strength, but in God's strength. So, the rebuking hand of God, the character of God in his rebuke, some people like Hebrews 12 says, cannot like God's rebuke. And not like his chastising hand, but we need to look at God's chastising hand as good for us. And we can be confident that if we get outside God's direction and his, his will, we can be confident in his character that he's going to rebuke us to bring us back. And you see, Nahum. And what he was speaking to just right before this, that this great devastation that was going to come upon Nineveh. 
but yet in it we see God's hand had been already upon Israel by Assyria. God used that tool to bring His rebuke upon His people. Not to destroy them, but to bring their heart back to Him. And the sad thing is, is in the day and the time that we're in right now, Israel still has not fully come back. But we know. And Nahum knew that the time was ahead when they would. When they would. What a great thing. God's promises are true too, aren't they? But the rebuking hand of our God, we need to understand it and we need to like it when it comes upon us. And be that son that takes the reproof and turns and comes back to him. Our great God, a shelter, a shelter in the time of storm. I want to end uh, just at Sunday school and give us a little time. I said I want to try and be done by 9.30, so that was a little short. Um, but I want to sing the other couple verses of a shelter in the time of storm. If we can get Caleb to, to bring it up for us and end our time. I think I'll have Brother Kurt pray for us then when we're done. That 360, 369. We're so grateful to you for being that great shelter, the great rock that we can place our anchor into, Lord, and, and be confident that it'll never move. We're grateful for the wings, the sheltering wings that we can hide under as well, Lord. And Father, I just trust that uh, you will forever be faithful to your word, Lord. We're grateful that you have always forever in the past been faithful to your word and we're trusting you lord for that forever into the future lord and we're so looking forward to all the things that you've promised for israel and for your church for everyone that loves you thank you for being good to us lord we're looking forward to what else you have for us this day in this place from your word and by the power of your spirit lord in jesus name we pray amen